Hello everyone, Michael Carter. Obviously I'm not Brother Mike, but uh, we need to lift Brother Mike up in prayer because he's not doing so hot. He's pretty sick right now. So um, he asked me to fill in today. So you got me. I'm a, I'm a brother of yours, but I'm not, I'm not Brother Mike. So, so I'll, do, I'll do my best in a short notice. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through a bunch of just diff, just a bunch of different deliverance related topics. I know Rick teaches like that quite a bit and what ends up happening is that ends up filling certain people, you know, that if you got one teaching that's all about one thing, then other people might not get it all. So I'm just going to teach from a, duff, a bunch of different topics. So I'm going to start off with prayer. Father God, thank you so much. Thank you so much for today, Lord. Uh, thank you for the breath in our lungs, Lord. Thank you for our salvation, Lord. That's first and foremost. I can't thank you enough for what you pulled me out of, Lord, and, and everyone else out of, Lord. We just thank you for your salvation, Lord. We want to put that at the forefront, Lord. We just, uh, we lift this, I lift this teaching up to you, Lord. I just pray that it's all you and none of me, Lord, and, and anything that's uh, fleshly, just pray that it falls to the ground, Lord. Just pray that your Holy Spirit works through me in mighty ways. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, the first one that I was just going to talk about was uh, not getting entangled again into bondage after the Lord set you free from something. And uh, that happened when I got set free it was back in 2014. I kind of shared a little bit about it last time. Brother Mike let me teach up here. But uh, is what happened was I got born again. And I went from not being able to even leave my house because I was so demonically infested, right? And then I had this, this incredible uh, conversion and I got filled with the Holy Spirit. But then after that, I didn't know anything about the miracle list, right? I had no idea about the miracle list. I had no idea about forgiving, but I did get this from the Holy Spirit, was to make a list of everybody, just like it says in the miracle list, and then forgive everybody and pray for them. So that's what I did. And when I did that, it was like, I can't explain it to you. I had no more beef with anybody. I had no more beef with anybody, right? And, and it was like, shackles were just lifted off of me I was already the shackles were gone because I got born again and filled with the Holy Spirit but this was like a different level now it was like the Lord pulled me out to see that everybody else was in this bondage of taking offenses right this really is one of bro uh, brother Mike's premier teachings is how to not take offenses because when you get pulled out of it and you can see clearly to see what's happening. Satan has everybody in bondage through that. He's got everybody taking offenses. And then once you take the offense, now you're in this, this mess, this rat race of this world where you can't get free. So um, the scripture that I wanted to bring up was uh, Galatians 5, 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewithin Christ has made us free. And be not yet yet entangled with the yoke of bondage. So you don't want to go back into the bondage. Now I know that that was the he was talking in, in reference to not going back under them, them laws, right? The law after they got uh, saved out of that. But in actuality, that is, I mean, any type of yoke of bondage is 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 bondage, right? So any kind of lies or anything. So this spirit also works with the gossip spirit. And I found that out really, really quickly because once I was set free and you know, there, there is a honeymoon phase when you get born again. I, I, I know there is because I had it and I know so many people that had it where nothing seems to bother you anymore. The things that used to bother you don't bother you anymore because you got saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. You're looking at life, everything is brighter, right? You're, you're just excited, There's, you're, 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 you're an optimist. Um, but the way that this demon was trying to get back into me was through the gossip. It was through the gossip. And I was, I was a gossiper in high school. So the demons knew that I had that in me. So they, they would come after me with people at work. Uh, 
and mostly it was just, hey, you know, this person's this way or that way or that way. And if I didn't shut it down, then I would start to slide into their arguments that they had and I was in bondage. And then if I pull back and I, and I repented to the Lord, if I pulled back and said, no, hey, that, that person's, uh, you know, I would always give them like three good things to think about with that person. Well, hey, he might be struggling there, but look how good he is in this, this, and this. And then all of a sudden it was like, I was back into this honeymoon phase again. But it was the Lord was showing me that if I did take that offense, if I did jump in on that gossip, now it's two people against the one person. Now you're entangled again. There's an entanglement going on. Now you're getting bad soul ties. You're getting all this stuff. So I just kept pulling back and pulling back. And then the test started getting worse, right? What ended up happening was there would be people from, you know, I'd run into people just, their demons would manifest and it was it was it was crazy right on job sites or whatever well then i i had to see i had a i had to know that the stuff was coming like that it was the tests were coming harder so i had to make it a deal with myself that i had to no matter what how mad this person was how much he hated me i was going to get to a point where i was going to shake that person's hand before i left before i left that job site i'd say hey i'm going to i'm going to work this out to him uh, and, 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 it, and it worked. I never took offenses. And, and then I find out later on, you know, like I said, Brother Mike's, his premier teaching, outside of, I think he's probably the best teacher that I've seen as far as with, with uh, the reje rejection spirit. I mean, I don't think there's any better teachings on the rejection spirit. I mean, Noah Hines even talked about that when he, when he preached here, right? He said he didn't know anything about the rejection spirit until he watched Brother Mike's teaching on it how he brought it back to it comes in when you're young and here's the tactics they use so you can pin it back to that, right? But Brother Mike's other teachings is the offenses because that's the one that Satan used to keep us in bondage and get us, get us all roped up and, and filled with demons. So that really is something that I want to stress on you guys. It got to the point where it was almost, I wouldn't say humorous, but it was when I was sitting back, I was almost looking at things the way that God would look at things, right? I would say, I can't believe that they're upset with each other over nothing. But prior to me not have, you know, prior to me forgiving everybody, I would, would have been in on that. I would have been stoking the fire with the one person, you know, throwing, throwing, uh, throwing logs in the fire. Yeah, and, and guess what else she does? Or guess what else she did to me? Guess how she looked at me that way and she did this and I would have been right there. But after I got out of that, I was like, okay, wow, this is great. I'm not doing this anymore. So it got to be almost, uh, it got to be almost entertaining to see this stuff. Now I would pray for people at that point. You're still able to pray for both sides, right? For reconciliation. So that's what I was able to do. The Lord was able to pull me away, pull me out of it to see from a, a, a different lens, a different angle to see, okay, hey, this is what we need to do. We need to pray. This is, that's part of putting on the mind of Christ, right? You gotta see things the way Christ sees it. So those things are foolish to Christ, right? To have these little offenses and stuff. So, um, the pendulum, the pendulum thing, I know, I know that that's a demonic tool used for Satan, right? The pendulums and they use the, the pendulums to go back and forth over people and, I used to use it for chakras to see how fast your chakra was spinning and stuff. People use them for anything. They use them for to see if they got a boy or a girl for a baby. That's a fast way to get a, a, a death spirit coming into that baby, right? But I'm using this as just a, a different teaching tool that the, the pendulum, Satan doesn't want us in the middle. Think of a pendulum sitting there, right? It's resting. He doesn't ever want us in there in Christ, right? That's the truth in the middle. He always wants to pull us a little bit to one side or the other of the truth. That's how he does it. Sometimes he can get people, uh, one, of the, one of the ways that he'll do it is he'll pull somebody out of, say maybe like a, a deep Baptist background where they, don't, uh, where they don't believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? And then all of a sudden he'll pull them out of that. If they got free from that, maybe they got some deliverance. Now he's going to pull them into a hyper charismatic uh, movement like a Bethel type place 
where everything is gifts of the Holy Spirit. There's no teaching of the Word. There's nothing. It's all laying on the hands. Then you get that false impartations. Satan doesn't, he only wants you on one side or the other. So he does that in many different ways. So just keep, just keep that in mind. It's just, you can use even train tracks, right? He, want, he doesn't want you on the tracks. He wants you off the tracks, on the side, just, just falling away like that. So that's one of his, his main tactics that he uses. So, um, and then Matthew 11, 28, come unto me all that, that, are, that are labored and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. There is rest in Christ when you're on the truth. When you're not on the truth, when you're in sinking sand, you're not going to get any. You're not going to get any rest at all. I, I fell off the boat of the the doctrine of the Trinity for a little while, and brother of mine had to help me get get back on that boat. I was tormented for that. I got a weight that the doctrine of the Trinity is truth, and that's what gets uh, afflicted from all the major cults in the world, is they do not believe in the deity of Christ. And for some reason, I had some teachers that were teaching me this different doctrine of the Trinity, and it was false, and I had no peace. And that's good. God wants it that way. God wants us to be in the middle, right? He wants us to be there. And if we're, if we're too far on one side, we need good brothers and sisters. Like I had a, a good brother that said, hey, he was patient with me. He's like, hey, this is this, is this, this is that, and brought me back into there, and then I was back on, on the rock. Outside of that, you're on sinking sand. So you got to make sure that you know that that's Satan's tactic, right? So a lot of times in deliverance, what, what Satan will do is he'll bring somebody all the way to the other side. It's just a quick thing because they don't know the truth. They haven't renewed their mind, so you tell them this, this, or this. Well, now they get a demon out. Now, okay, we'll flush them over to the other side, and, it's, and there's, there's error on both sides. So that pendulum teaching is kind of, kind of important because you'll see... You guys will kind of see it now how Satan's probably been doing that to you in the past or anybody that you've been working with. So, Also, the, uh, the way that I renewed my mind before I knew about this ministry and about you know, the, the miracle list was there was a teacher that I was watching, but his main thing was that God's not going to start with a negative thought. So if you're getting any type of negative thoughts, you switch them over to the a complete opposite. So with a baby Christian like I was, I didn't have all these scriptures memorized. I didn't have all this. So I would just, if I knew it was a negative thought, you're this, this, and this, and I would switch it over. I'd, I'd literally write it out, and then I'd switch it over for the opposite, and then I'd say, okay, no, actually, the truth is that I am this in Christ. And then I would write it down like 50 times until I had it in my brain and I would renew my mind like that and I would walk it out. It's not enough to just write stuff down and say, yeah, my identity is in Christ is I'm un unconditionally loving or I'm bold on this. It's not enough to just write it down. You got to walk it out. So you got you to gotta renew your mind that way. And that's the way that I renew my mind before I got the teachings on this. Uh, you know, and I was... I was flushing stuff out of me, but just through bringing the, the truth in, right? So the, the truth comes in, the demons have no more, nothing else to stand on, right? So that, that's, that's why that's so important. Uh, it was real simple. You just simply replace the lie for the truth. Real simple. That, that's, that's deliverance in a nutshell, right? You, you remove the lie, and then the demon responsible for it and replace it with God's truth. If you're not doing that process, what you're doing is you're making people worse. And that's the, that's the truth. Because if they're not willing to renew their mind, the demons are just going to come back in worse. So it's a process. That mind renewal is a process, right? It's not overnight. That's why uh, fellowships are very important. Crowd of great witnesses is very important. Strong, if you can get a strong brother and sister in Christ to go over scriptures with you, on a regular basis, you're going to grow exponentially because you're going to be able to find his or hers weak spots and they're going to be able to find yours as well. You guys can go over the scriptures together. You guys need strong brothers and sisters in Christ to grow. It's very, very critical. And it helps you renew your mind because they'll be able to pick up on key words. When somebody's, 
when somebody's thoughts are weak, their their mind is not renewed at all. When everything, when you know, if, if they're a complete pessimist, that pessimist demon is one of the worst demons out there. Uh, that 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 pessimist demon will keep people in bondage, for sure, because you're not you're not grateful for anything anymore. You're everything is is just half glass empty type of thinking and it's, it's not helping you so you got to get that pessimist out and the pessimist is behind all the negative thoughts so you switch all those negative thoughts over for the truth of God's word so that's in uh, Romans 12 2 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So this is just our reasonable service to do this. This isn't, this isn't, uh, you know, something that, you know, hey, I think it would be good for you to renew your mind. This is our reasonable service to give our holy light, our, our bodies over uh, as a living sacrifice. And be not transformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? So it is actually the will of God to have your mind renewed on the scriptures. It's not a, it's not a say a prayer one day and you're good to go. Hey, you're in. High five. We got to renew our mind on the scriptures. We got to think like Christ thinks. We have to. We have to. And, and when I started to think like Christ thinks, I, 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 that started to strip all the fear away as well. You're not looking at things as, as fearful anymore. You're looking at everything that happens to you as an opportunity to grow in, in grace with Christ. Everything is a possibility when your mind is renewed. When it's not renewed, it's not. You can only think negatively about it. You can only think negatively. You can, you know, something happens to you. Brother Mike talks about it. You're on that roller coaster, uh, roller coaster Christian life. If things are going good, you're great. Yeah, hallelujah. When it, when it dips down like that, it's, you're, you're sunk, right? You're, you're a mess again. We can't be like that. When it's going down like that, you, you start saying, praise God. God's going to move. God's got to show me what he's going to do. I get to see God move today. Praise God. This is good. That's a renewed mind. That's coming at it from a renewed mind uh, aspect, right? So it's very, very important. That praise God thing is, is very, very important. That's a great habit to get into. When something tough or, or a tribulation, something comes up, praise God, we're going to start this thing off the way God wants us to. How can we position ourselves? Who, who can we ask to pray for us? Who can we this, you know? And then you're not looking at it from a pessimistic viewpoint, right? So that's going to help you get into that uh, renewed mind state very fast, very quickly. So, I wanted to kind of go over too the importance of the importance of uh, discipleship with deliverance. So, if you take one without the other, you're going to be in a rough spot. They they kind of intermesh together, right? Now, I'm not saying you have to disciple everybody that you take through deliverance, but if they're not being discipled, you need to make sure that they're in some type of a strong fellowship or something. Because just casting a couple demons out of somebody, choking out a couple demons and expecting them to know what the spirit world's doing and, and how to uh, pray aggressively, how to renew your mind, they're going to end up getting worse at that point. So discipleship is absolutely critical. Discipleship. We're called to make disciples, not converts. We're not called to make converts. We're called to make disciples. And unfortunately for some people, I, I like the process of seeing what God does in somebody's life. You know, you don't take any credit for that, right? The Holy Spirit's doing the work, but just to be able to Speak a little truth into them here or there. Give them a scripture here or there. Let them know you're praying. Let them know you love them. Let them know that, hey, you're not in this alone. Hey, I went through that before. This is how the Lord 
uh, help me get through this. That you know, you got a stumbling block in front of you. Praise God, let's push through. If they don't have anybody to do that, their chances of making it's not going to be good. You know, so that discipleship piece is very, very important. Uh, they have to be reading the word daily. Get people in the habit of reading the word daily. That's going to cleanse them from the inside out. It's going to help them to the renew of their minds, right? Um, so, I got also. Uh, this is this is kind of a controversial thing. It's being able to the importance of spotting a plant. So when you guys get into ministry, this is going to be something very, very, very critical for your ministries to thrive in. I'm going to give you a few stories of, of how this blocked my ministry and how, in actuality, I didn't pass this test for a while. And it will block your ministry. So, um, the, to be honest with you, when I heard the word, the, the term plant, I didn't like it at first, right? I didn't. I don't like. I, I. I thought it kind of was a little bit derogatory, like, "Well, hey, God can. God can work through anybody. God will do a miracle. Yes, He will. But that person has to be willing to change. So what ends up happening is Satan will send somebody that he knows is not willing to change, not willing to do what they need to do to get set free, and they'll send them to you to suck your time away. That's the time, that's a plant. That's exactly what it was. And I didn't get the teaching until I watched one of Derek Prince's videos on it. It's got a short little five minute clip of what these people were. And he said, you gotta leave them alone, you're wasting God's time. And then as soon as I heard that, you're wasting God's time, I got convicted. Because I had these people that were, they were sucking my time up, or sucking my time up and they weren't taking counsel. If they won't take counsel and they won't do what you're saying to them, it's time to peel back, right? It's time to peel back. Uh, the way that he had, he had discussed it in that was he had said that there, this, there was this couple, this married couple, that he kept giving the scriptures to. Hey, I'm telling you, the scripture says that you need to honor your husband and submit to him. You're not doing that. And then he said to the wife, you're supposed to, or, or he said to the husband, you're supposed to love your wife. You're not doing that. You're not taking counsel. You're not doing what the Bible says. I can't work with you anymore. When you guys are ready to do what the Bible says, you can come back. But at that point, they weren't ready. And he cut them loose. He says, you have to do that. So just give you a couple of these stories just so you can kind of see how they work so you can pick up the different plants. Because a lot of you guys are already in ministry. You want to be able to you, you want to be able to pick a plant out, right? It's it's it gets easier to spot, and then it's nice to have another minister because sometimes you you really you know you think that somebody is further along than they are, and, and this and that, and then it, it takes another minister to be like, hey, uh, I've worked with that person, I've done this, this, and this, and they didn't take any counsel, just to give you that that foreknowledge, right? So you can kind of see. There might be a track record here so you don't fall into the same trap. Because chances are that minister's already got time sucked for hours and hours, you know. So uh, one of them was one of them was a Native American guy. I used to preach at a uh, at a homeless homeless shelter in Minnesota. I'm from Minnesota and it's it's called the Union Gospel Mission. They would they had homeless people, it was open just guys only, but they could come in there and if they listened to the preacher for the chapel service, they got a free cot that night so they could sleep all in there. And, and so a lot of the people that you got in there, I mean, there were, it was, there, there were a lot of homeless people in there. It was, a, it was a tough ministry to see any fruit coming from, right? But uh, this guy comes running up to me after the service and uh, he's like, hey man, uh, the Lord told me that you know about deliverance. Hey, you want to help me with my deliverance? And that should have been a red flag right there, right? This guy's chuck full of demons. The Lord told me that. But I, I, I worked with them, and what was happening was I was I was working with them, 
and I couldn't see it. I was blinded to the fact that he wasn't getting any better. He wasn't doing what I was telling him to do, and, and he had this secret sin. And it took another brother or two brothers to bring it to my attention because he was in a, he was in a halfway house that another brother of mine had, and he's like, hey, something's not right. And I'm like, ah, no, he's doing good. Every time I talked to him, well, it, was the, it was a different person. These plants can actually have a different version of themselves come up to you. This, this guy was different that talked to me. And then when he was around the other people, he was a completely different person, right? Jekyll and, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde type person. So this other fake soul would come up around me and I couldn't see it. That's why, like I said, the, the, the brothers and sisters in Christ can, can help you with this. So what ended up happening was I started seeing that he, well, I brought, my buddies were saying because they have the more drug background than I do, they're saying, hey, he's got, he, he looks like somebody that's on drugs. He's still doing them. I can tell this and that. And then I said, all right, well, that I, I gave him the Ananias and Sapphira uh, stuff. I said, hey, we're going after high level Native American spirits, right? And these things are, these things want you dead. They, and they almost, took him out on a, he got in a car accident there was during the deliverance process they were trying to take him out but I told him I said we're not playing with small demons here these aren't just like little spirits you know if you're lying to me you're lying to the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is the one that's doing the deliverance and I gave him the Ananias and Sapphira and he said no no no, I'm not on any drugs I'm not this and I said all right and then a buddy of mine was like, well, let's go make a, a sneak attack on him at the, at the house, you know, and, and then we get over there and he's just completely, he had just snorted a pill and he was just out of his mind and it was, but I, I, I thought this guy, that the demons were tricking me and that's what they'll do with these plants, is they'll trick you into thinking that this is the next Smith Wigglesworth. You know, I was getting tricked into thinking this guy was we were going to go into all these, you know, Native American uh, places and, and win all these souls, and he was going to help push this deliverance through, and all it was all it was all a trick, right? The guy never repented. He said he did, but he didn't. It was it wasn't true repentance. The demons were coming out, but they were loading back into him. So I was making them way worse. So just watch out for that. If they have the secret sin, I had another guy too. I worked with him for hours and hours and spent so much time with him he had a secret sin as well had a secret sin and i had it there was another brother that was working with him that said he had, he admitted it to me and then i had to confront him on it but he couldn't renew his mind because he didn't want to get rid of that sin so we're going after these high level demons he made altars to lucifer in his house we're talking about high level demons uh we're trying to go after these and he's got a secret sin that he's doing once a month of the sexual uh, type you know so those things will block the deliverance they'll load back in all the work that you've done will load back in right and this guy would not take his thoughts captive I tried so hard I would sit there with him and just hey that's a negative you know it was almost like I was telling him what his negative thoughts were hey this is the thoughts you're getting right yeah I am well why are you letting those stay in your brain, you know? Well, he couldn't see it because he had that secret sin that was blocking him from moving forward. So secret sin is another one for, uh, for these plants. You gotta ask them, hey, we're, we're doing this. You're getting worse, what's going on? So that you gotta ask these tough questions with them, right? And then I had another guy, full-blown mentally ill to the 10th power, uh, sent to me, you know, Early on in my ministry, uh, I wasn't equipped yet, not even close. And this guy was on 27 different pain, uh, different uh, meds, psycho yeah, psychotropics. And he wouldn't, it, it was the same thing. He wouldn't, anything that I would tell him, he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't take his thoughts captive, wouldn't do anything. But then what ends up happening is they'll talk your ear off for the entire time. And you think you're getting somewhere, but you're not. They sucked your time. So then I got to the point where I said, hey, this miracle list kind of, in a way, will weed, weed the plants out, right? So use it as a tool like that. 
And some of the ways that you can do this so you know that they're working that list is you could ask them, hey, when, when we, you know, did you work the list like I asked you to? Did you do number one? Yeah, okay, we'll go grab your paperwork. And then they'll say, well, well I did it in my head. Well, I'm like, oh yeah, you didn't, you didn't actually do it the way Brother Mike said to do it. So let's do this. Uh, let's, let's kick this back for a couple more weeks, give you, give you some time to work on that number one. And then if they don't do it again, then it's, then it's time to, hey, see, you're not wasting time at that, at that point anymore. You're not wasting that two hours with that person. You've cut that down to five minutes. You're not kicking under the curve. You're telling them, hey, this is the area for your next breakthrough. You got to do it. So that's how you can weed the plants out through that list, that miracle list. Um, so that guy, yeah, that guy wouldn't, wouldn't take any counsel, wasn't getting better. But I was learning at that point. I wasn't casting demons out of him. I wasn't part of that, right? So you are on the hook for that. By the way, all those people like Catherine Crick and stuff that are casting demons out of people and that are unrepentant in the parks, they're on the hook for those things coming back seven times worse for casting them out of people that aren't repentant and don't forgive people. So just keep that in mind in your ministries. You are on the hook for that. You have to be discerning to see whether or not they are willing to uh, do what it takes to get free, right? If they are taking your counsel, if they're listening to God's word, if they're renewing their mind, these types of things. Uh, the last one that I'll talk about with that was another guy that was filled with religious demons and I had no idea uh, at that point either on my walk how tricky these religious demons really are, right? Uh, those are the nastiest of the nasty, right? The religious demons are, uh, they're, they're something, uh, it's like a, a deliverance minister's nightmare when somebody's filled with those. Derek Prince said that the, the religious demons are the worst that he's ever seen. Uh, depending on what types of cults people have came out of, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, that stuff's not built overnight. That's a, that's, that's a stronghold that was built over many generations. We're not talking just about this life. We're talking about past generations of, of this, just this error that's in their brains. So you have to go really slow with them, right, with the religious demons. Well, this guy was filled up with religious demons, and I couldn't, I couldn't decipher what was happening, but he would just pull out these things to get me into arguments. And, and I wasn't discerning enough to not, to, to not spot it, right? So what I would do is I'd fall for the bait and then we'd start arguing about something and, you know, and then his religious demons with his pride and working with all of my spirits still at the same point. We weren't getting anywhere, and then another. Then it was another two hours wasted, and then I'm like, "Ah, oh, man!" So that was another another one I just had to give the list to, and it was it wouldn't do it. So I just I kind of peeled away. But that was the one where I got the Derek Prince teaching. That's the one where I repented to the Lord, and then boom, my ministry flourished after that. So I had to see that first. I had to get that teaching, I had to learn the hard way so I knew how to spot them down the road, right? So don't, don't think that all this stuff is wasted time, right? Some people have to go through it, right? If, if you are a little bit more thick-skulled in, in certain areas, you might need to go through something to see it. You might have to have a little boo-boo here and there so you can say, oh, I don't want to do that anymore. Like a little child grabbing a hot pan, right? Oh, I'm not going to do that anymore because they had to feel it, right? Some people just can't take people's word for it. So once I got that, that teaching, because Brother Mike had already talked about plants at that point. So I'd heard about it, but I didn't, I didn't get it until Derek Prince is teaching, right? So sometimes somebody will plant the seed, the other one will uh, water it, right? So Derek Prince is teaching on that got me, and I, I repented for it. And then, like I said, I told the Lord, uh, I, I, was, I was just breaking down. I'm sorry I'm wasting your time. I don't want to waste your time. I know every second uh, of, a, of a believer's day is, is valuable, right? Every, every second of the day is valuable. Even if you're sitting around, you can be reading the Bible. You can be fellowshipping with, with people. You can be doing stuff. So every second of the day is, is, is very important to the Lord, and He wants to use it for, for His glory. So I repented of that, and then, and then yeah, then I started getting 
Then the Lord started sending me people that were hungry to get delivered. And they were hungry to start learning and wanting to be discipled. Uh, so that, that's how that happened. So if that's happening in your ministries right now, just see, you don't have to go through it the hard way. You can see how I, I, I broke through through the Lord, right? So, uh, so then, uh, yeah, those, so some of these, uh, I'll give you a couple of the tactics so you guys know to steer clear. I've talked to Jennifer about these before too, and she kind of laughs about it because she knows. She works with a lot of people. These religious demons will try to get you into non-salvation issue arguments. Uh, you're trying to get them to, uh, you know, forgive their uncle Chester who molested them when they're eight years old. Now they want to argue whether or not you should celebrate Christmas or not. Red flag, time out, time out, okay, time out. That's when you gotta shut it down right there and say, hey, hold on, hold on one minute, hold on one minute. Let's go back, hey, that's a, that's a different topic for another day. Well, I think this, this, and this. Uh, another one is the, the rapture, the timing of the rapture, right? Stay out of that, to stay out of that. <laughs> stay out of that one, I used to, I'm telling you, I got broke from that one through Brother Mike as well. Because I don't have the same end times view as Brother Mike. But I'll tell you what, there was three words that he told me one time when I tried to rebuke him on it that helped me. He said, you might be right. That's four words, but. <laughs> so he said, you might be right. And then I was like, man, that feels, that feels good. I don't have to, I might, I might be right on this, you know, and then all of a sudden, I no longer wanted to argue with them anymore. I no longer wanted to argue because here's the thing is, the demons want to get you to take the offense so it blocks the deliverance. Boom, yep. right out. Yep. So, the timing of the rapture, stay out of that one. Just, hey, you can even say, hey, you might be right, you know what I mean? Hey, that, hey. That's a that's a time. I would love to talk to you about that another day. Hey, let's remember Chester. We gotta get him. We got hey, let's get him out of there, right? Let's get his demons out of there. Let's get let's get all those spirits out. And then another one, the uh the flat earth stuff. Right? Even if they bring it up, please don't not fall into that trap. You're gonna be there for an hour. And it's not it's not worth it. Hey, let's no hey, we're not gonna go there right now. A lot of times, I'll tell you right now, you start casting demons out of people, they'll, they'll get the revelation that they need down the road, right? right? It's a lot of times that demon that's got them in bondage that doesn't want them to, you know what I mean? That's the one that's got them in bondage that throws that out there, that, hey, we'll get them to bite on this one and this and that. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta cut it. You gotta cut it real quick. All these non-salvation issues, Cut it right now, hey, we, I, hey, man, I, time is limited, let's get back to what we gotta do, right? Uh, so, just steer clear on that one. And that guy, I mean, that guy had me, I mean, he, he had my number, I mean, the guy, that, that last plant that I had, it was, it was everything, I mean. <laughs> you know, a lot of times they'll say, hey, you're not doing deliverance right, you don't know what you're doing, you know, these, and, and Wynn Worley used to say, hey, I like the way I'm doing it better than the way you're not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so I always kind of use that one, you know. Because most of the time it is. It's people that aren't operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit that want to critique you. It's the religious demons. It's the religious demons. It's a pack of religious demons that is doing that. So they want to get you to take the offense. And then once, here's the other thing. So say... What the demons will do too is say you don't agree with something. Okay, hey, he, this guy might be a Christmas guy. <laughs> now you're shut down for the rest of it, right? You're shut down for the rest of the teaching a lot because that, that's what will happen. All of a sudden you'll shut down. They'll shut down. And then now you can't, not only you can't receive anymore from the teaching, now you can't receive at, at the altar call either. You see that? You see how that works? Those are the religious demons. Right. They're blocking your deliverance. That's right. 
So you have to let this, this stuff slide. You have to let this stuff slide, all right? Now, I'm not saying that these conversations can't be had down the road, right? But hey, not, not the right timing, right? Uh, and then you can even, you know, rebuke people after the fact, but if you're going to shut down and say, man, ah, oh, man, he said, oh, man, I believe it is a flatter. I, you know, I, I don't even like, a lot of these things, I don't even like sh giving people my side of it because it does, you know what I mean? It doesn't, it's just an opportunity for the demons of taking offense. So whatever, you know, and, and there, are, there are, I mean, with those holidays, there are scriptures you know, you could go either way on them. You know, that might be one you could say, hey, you might be right. You know, I mean, you got Romans 14, 5. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded on his own. You know, so you, could, you can talk about that. You got Colossians 2, 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day. Or of a new moon over the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which have not seen, vainly puffed up in the fleshly mind. That is the uh, seven day of Venice in a nutshell. In a nutshell, right there, that whole that scripture destroys the seven day of Venice doctrines that you must keep the Sabbath. And the worshiping of angels, they believe that Jesus Christ is the Archangel Michael. So right there, you just debunked a whole uh, cult right there. And Colossians, to be honest with you, is the best book. It's so short, but it's the best book for people coming out of cults. Read it over and over. Somebody's coming out of the J-dubs, read Colossians over and over. They're coming out of the Mormons, read it over and over. They're coming out of not believing in the Trinity, read it over and over. Colossians is a very strong book for people coming out of the cults. <clears throat> so steer clear from those ones. Uh, those religious demons also are responsible behind allergies. Allergies, right? So we know that uh, we know that in Timothy, in Timothy it says. It, uh, it says, and there shall not, hold on. Oh, that's Second Timothy, sorry. So First Timothy 4. Now that uh, the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, um, Seeking, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving to them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Right? Amen. So... If that's the truth, right, you're, you're renewing your mind on the, on the word of truth. Now, if, if these uh, food allergies and stuff have you believing something opposite of that, now that gives the demon the legal ground to have you in bondage. How do I know that? Because I came out of the occult and when you, when you were in the new age, it's all about getting you to the vegan state, right? Because there's it's just bad karma to be killing cows. I mean, they, 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 they're sacred to them and all these things. And so you get somebody down to a vegetable uh, only diet, right? And, and then it gets to the point where they put so much witchcraft on you that if you even go into a place where they're cooking bacon, you get instantly sick. I had so much witchcraft on me. If they touched a piece of meat on the spatula that was touching my... Uh, Chipotle vegan bowl or whatever, I would get instantly sick. You know there's demons behind that, right? So they're, they're at a lesser level in some, in some cases, right? They'll say, hey, you got, you got this allergy or that allergy. Well, hey, you know what? Get the allergy demons out. Derek Prince did another teaching 
uh, with little with a little child. He had so many. He asked the mom, "What, what is it that he's allergic to?" She said, "I would. It would be easier for me to tell you what he's not allergic to. That's how bad this kid was in bondage with these food allergies." And then Derek Prince, all he did was he said, and and that's the beauty of the children's ministry because. These things aren't embedded into them for 40, 50, 60, 70 years. You just get them out of the little child. He just had them blow out three times, and then the kid could eat anything. And then the mom called him the next day. Hey, I got to get prayer from you. I got food allergies too. So that's, that's, that's really what's behind them, right? Uh, and it's not only food. It's it's. I have a story with this lady that she joins us on our Tuesday night Bible studies. She's from Canada. I mean, I'm talking just a, an incredible testimony of what God has done in her life. It's been incredible. Uh, she thought <laughs> her husband started going through deliverance, and he got delivered of uh, full-blown um, Tourette syndrome. Full-blown Tourette syndrome to the point where he was punching himself in the face. That's how bad this Tourette's demon was. So he's on all these medications for like 40, 50 years. And then uh, he goes on Rick's Zoom call and then starts going through deliverance. Uh, and then he, he was working with another brother and, and, and then the Tourette's demon came out. The OCD demons came out. He's off of his medication. His wife thinks he's nuts all of a sudden. What happened? What, what's going on? You know? And he's like, yeah, this, this hardcore Christianity. She's like, what? What kind of cult are you in? I'm leaving you. I'm, you know, she, it was to the point where she was going to, she already had another place. Like She was signing the paperwork for it. And then Tony had her listen to one of Brother Mike's teachings. He said, you just listen to this. And then the, uh, the prayer part came on at the end when Brother Mike was calling stuff out. And she said, Boom, some kind of huge religious demon left her. So then she was like, this is real. And then she started going through deliverance after deliverance after deliverance. So it's been amazing to watch her journey every week. She's a doer of the word. So I see her every Tuesday and it's like, she'll come in and she'll say, hey, I just prayed for everybody at my work. The whole atmosphere changed. These people that hated me before, they're coming up to me and loving me and this and that and, and you know she's a doer of the word so it's fun that's the part of the discipleship that's fun so like when you're helping people grow you get to see what the lord's doing in their lives right so this lady um she she believed a lie that she had allergies to dogs because somebody when well, there was a dog that jumped on her and then I think it licked her or something, and then all of a sudden somebody told her, you must be allergic to dogs. And then she just believed the lie, so that demon came in. So anytime she was a win around dogs, she got all messed up. And it was bad. And then I said, hey, why don't we just go after that lie? And we'll change it over for the truth, right? And, and she did that. And then the next day we, we cast the demon out, the, the religious demons behind it. We changed the lie over. She repented for believing a lie. The next day, she had a dog come over, licking her on her face, nothing. No problems at all. So she's, she's a dog lover again. So these, these religious demons will keep you into bondage. If you are believing any lies, they will have you in bondage. And these religious demons are so tricky. They will work through other people. They are so tricky. You know, uh, just watch out for those things. Very, very tricky, tricky demons. Um, one of the other things she got, she got uh, delivered from was smoking, right? And she was a smoker for 45 years. She was a smoker for 45 years, but here's the, here's the crazy part and I wanted to bring up to you guys how important it is to create healthy habits. Uh, it's not enough to just get delivered. You got to now change your flesh habits over to something that is more edifying to the Lord, right? So. And, and real quick with the smoking thing, if, if you got somebody that wants to get delivered from smoking, you ask them when they started smoking. Almost all the time you'll have some kind of trauma that happened when they started smoking. So you go back to the trauma, 
That's the soul wound that the spirits work on. They, that's the ones they're using for the smoking habit. They just touch that soul wound, they, they afflict that soul wound, then they get them to light up, and then they, then they pull off of the soul wound. So you gotta go back to get them to forgive the person, get the spirits out of there. Then now they have nothing to hold on to anymore, and then the spirits will come out. But we had no problem with that. We had no problem getting the spirit out because every time she smoked again, she would start immediately going into deliverance. She would start uh, like yawning and, and burping. It was like her body was rejecting the smoking. But she still had that habit of 45 years going out with her coffee in the morning and doing the same thing over and over and over. So she thought she had to do it. And then she was catching them in her, in her brain. Well, oh, as soon as you get to this mile marker, you can light up again. You know? So she started catching the thoughts and then the way that she changed her habits over was, okay, well, instead of smoking, I'm gonna read a psalm and, read my co and drink my coffee. That's what broke the thing loose, right? That's what broke the thing loose. So she changed that habit over. And that's how you're gonna, that's how you're gonna destroy the gluttony demon as, at the same time. The gluttony demon works the same way. You gotta destroy that thing. You gotta see what it's doing and you got to destroy it. You got to switch your habits over. You got to you got to get into it. You know you got to work out. You got to at least go and walk your dogs a couple times a day. You got to get some kind of physical exercise. And when those thoughts come around, you you know don't bring any of the nasty food into your house. Have stuff that's bringing nourishment to your body, and that's edifying to the body, right? And and pray over your food, right? Pray over and give thanks to the Lord. It says we can eat anything as long as we give thanks for it. So just, just pray over your food, give thanks. I mean, there's a lot of countries, I mean, they don't even have food. They're eating dirt biscuits. So it's, I mean, we are so blessed in the United States, it's, it's not even funny. So yeah, changing over for the good habits. Uh, another thing, uh, that, I t that, I, that I've been running into lately, and this happened to me too. A brother was praying for me one time. I was getting deliverance. I, I want you guys to watch this when you're going through, when somebody's going through deliverance in front of you. All of a sudden, they're getting good deliverance, bucket type deliverance, and then everything stops. But you didn't say anything. Uh, all of a sudden, the deliverance just stopped in its tracks. Now you got a timeout, okay, what are you thinking about right now? Because what these mind drifters uh, did to them was they pulled them away from the deliverance, they pulled them away from fighting and getting the spirits out, they pulled them away to something. What the demons were doing to me was they were pulling me away and getting me to think about work the next day. It stopped the deliverance in its tracks. So you gotta get them to repent, hey, let's, let's, let's focus on this. Let's go back to you know Uncle Chester. Hey, let's 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 get let's get the spirits out, right? So, you got a question? What, was he thinking about work the next day, or were you? It's the person going through the deliverance. Oh, okay. Okay, so they'll they'll get their mind off of that, right? You want to be completely focused on your deliverance, getting the spirits out, right? So that those mind those mind blankers will do that to you. That happened to me, and I'm I'm seeing it now. I'll shut it down. They're they're getting good deliverance. And then it stops, and then I'll say, what kind of thought do you get? Uh, a lot of times they'll be like, well, this is crazy, you know, or deliverance isn't real, or whatever. These are all doubting spirits that are getting into their brain, and, and that's going to be your chance to help them on a second level. There's a doubt spirit there. we got to take care of that. It blocked your deliverance. Right. Then they'll know going forward, hey, I can't, have, I can't have these doubt spirits in me anymore. So... Real important on that one. Another one is if the person starts laughing at you, mocking spirits. There's something that they got something in them. They got something, the demons got something on them. You have to shut that down. You have to dig. You gotta dig deeper. You gotta see what's going on. Ask them the tough questions. What, what kind of sin? Are you doing this, that, and this? The Lord will give you the tough questions to ask. Are you in fornication? Are you still watching porn? Are you doing this? Yeah, I still am. Okay, well that, there's where it is. There's the block. You know, you got to get them to repent. 
and then get the demons out. But if they're if they're laughing and cackling, there's there's a reason why that they're trying to they're trying to trick you into wasting more of God's time, right? Especially we're on the altar call. We don't have a whole lot of time. A lot of times with the altar call, we gotta work with as many people, and we gotta go with the anointing of the Holy Spirit to go with as many people as possible. If somebody's cackling there. You go real quick on them just to ask them a few questions. If they're not, if they're not giving anything up, you kind of got to say, hey, you know, a one-on-one -on -one might be the best way here to kind of dig deeper because you don't want to waste the anointing, waste God's time at that point, right? So if they're not really, you know, they'll say, oh, I've forgiven everybody. I've done this and that. Now there's something deeper. So you got you to gotta try to wedge that out. And a lot of times what, what ends up happening is, the Holy Spirit will just make these things manifest sometimes. You have to be able to pick them out, right? He, God's not trying to trick us. The, the manifestations are very important for you to look at through deliverance. you got to watch the manifestations. What are they doing? Are they loud? Are these witchcraft spirits? Are they, you know, uh, just watch the different manifestations. Did they jump when you said something? That's probably a fear demon. You know, you got to watch the manifestations because the Holy Spirit will do that to get them to manifest to show you, okay, they got this in them. They got that in them. You know, the lying spirits. You should be able to pick out the lying spirits. Um, and then they got to repent and get them out, you know, so. So, uh, Can I ask a yeah, go ahead. So if you're, if you're running through a list of stuff, like, let's say you feel like, okay, I'm supposed to pray this person, pray it. Maybe a little bit, but if you're running through a list, you know, this, that, you know, that, bang, 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 and they're not responding at all to anything you're saying, then, I mean, I wonder, well, maybe it's just me and I'm not the guy to help them, or? So you're asking them, you're asking them questions maybe at the altar call? Yeah. And you're saying, hey, you in any sin, and they're not saying anything to you? Or if you're going, hey, witchcraft, get out, Satan's get out, you know? Line spirits get out. Whatever it is, you're just kind of you're kind of you're trying to find maybe what's going on. Maybe the Holy Spirit's not really giving you anything, so you're just kind of running down a list and they don't manifest. They don't I would ask them. I would ask them what the what symptoms they're having. Okay. There's two really good questions to ask at the altar calls. What demonic symptoms are you having, and who hurt you the most? Those two will get you a long ways to go. You could talk to anybody. Who hurt you the most? What, you know, what's the earliest hurt you know? Because you want to dive into that one because that's the one that's the worst in them. So who hurt you the most? Uh, I got molested at four years old by my dad. Okay, let's work on that. You go right to there. You get that one out, the other ones will just fly out, right? So you got to ask those type of questions. Now, if they're shutting you down at that point, uh, then if they're not answering it, you probably have to go on to somebody else. Right. If they're not cooperative, like I said, you don't have a whole lot of time up there. So you got to move on to the next person. But yeah, just what demonic symptoms are you having? What are we working on? What are we working on? Well, I'm still, you know, I'm still lusting after women. Okay, let's, you know, that's a sin, you know, this and that. And then you get them to repent and then the lust demons come out, right? So that's how I would do that. Okay, uh, everything happens in the spirit realm first. Uh, the spirit realm is eternal. This is hard to grasp, but the spirit realm is eternal. This physical is not eternal. So things that are happening are happening in the spirit. Well, that's why the gift of tongues is so imp incredibly important, right? Because you're praying in the spirit. You're praying the perfect prayer. But, um, so everything happens in the... Uh, so if you look on a, so Jesus said this, this is the proof of it. If you look on a woman with lust in your, in your eyes, you've committed adultery with her already in your heart, right? So you've already committed this sin by looking at the woman with lust. So that means the lust demons are already in the person. The lust demons are already working with that person's lust demons. They're already making a love connection in the spirit realm. This is hard for people to understand, but... Uh, this is where the New Age background kind of helps. Uh, the New Age background kind of helps to, to come into this where you know, I used to do energy healings. We would do distance healing with crystals. And if the other person was on the phone, if I was working on their lower back, they could feel it. 
they would tell me, hey, you're working on my lower back right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they know, they, but they knew nothing was physical. It was all spiritual. It's not hard to grasp for an ex-New Ager. Everything happens in the spirit realm first. Okay, it happens in the spirit realm first. Uh, a good example of this, when I, I got delivered from the occult, but I still didn't know that my demonic books were demonic, right? I had no idea. I didn't have anybody discipling me. So then I had this dream. God does work in dreams and visions. I had this dream of this person trying to give me an occult book, and it was in the spirit realm, and I grabbed it and I pushed it down. There was people telling me, don't, don't grab it, don't grab it. I grabbed it and threw it down and I kicked it into the water. There was like a stream there in the dream. I kicked it in the water and then the next day I got, you know, I got rid of all my occult books. I put them all in a big, big uh, box and threw them out, right? So, but it happened in the spirit realm first. I got the, I got the knowledge there first. You see, you see how that works? Uh, it's the same with the lust demons. If somebody's got the lust of the adultery demons, right? That's how it works. The, oftentimes they'll work with people, you know, through Facebook or through whatever, and then they'll make this, you know, you know how we have like divine appointments for winning souls. They have these demonic appointments for doing adultery because they have the lust demons in them that are already, they're already going out and doing their bidding in the spirit realm first. They're connecting with these people. They're making demonic soul ties with these people. That's how, it's, that's how it's working. These demons are already doing that because they can see in the spirit realm. They know what's left in you. They know what's left in you. They know what's left in all of us. Yeah. They, can, they, can, they can scan you, right? Guess who also knows what's left in all of us? God. God knows what's left in all of us, right? So, so I mean, the, also the way that this worked was we had this, we had this, they were trying to make me into a teacher at this uh, product healing place out of California. They were trying to make me into a teacher. And I went to this teacher training and they had this, this testimony thing where, okay, how did you come into product healing? You know, similar to a testimony, how'd you come into Christ? But, so everybody would get up there and everybody would, would say, you know, it was like this overwhelming theme of, I seen a flyer at a you know coffee shop and then I seen that you guys had a level one pranic healing thing so I went there. Well this stuff is orchestrated already. Those spirits are already in the person. They've already got them in there. They're connecting with these teachers in the spirit realm. Then they connect with them. They put this, this demonically charged uh, poster on the wall. The demons get them to turn at it at that point. Boom, now they're hooked. They're hooked in. Then they go to the product healing center. But all that stuff happened in the spirit realm first. A lot of them will say, well, yeah, I seen Stephen Cole in the spirit realm. I seen him. He was waving his crystal around at me in the spirit realm. I seen him in a dream. The stuff is already in you. So I had already, what was ended up happening with the new age is you pick up this spirit. You go to the tarot cards. You go here. You're picking spirits up everywhere. And then they're always trying to get you loaded with higher and worse demons. So by the time I had watched a video from the guy that's running it out of uh, California with a crystal healing, the demon entered into me. And I had this uncontrollable urge to go find out what product healing was about. But I already had the spirits in me as well. But that one was a bigger demon because that's the main teacher in the world. His demon came into me, and I had to find out what this was. But that all happened in the spirit realm. So, the stuff is stuff is dangerous. Uh, that's why deliverance is so important. It's so important to continue to get these spirits out. Right? They have nothing left. Remember, they had nothing in Jesus. Right? They had nothing in them. There was no temptation that was going to get them. They had nothing in them. We want to get all these spirits out. We don't want to have any of these things in us. We don't want them. Just a couple more things real quick. I don't want to go too late today, but uh, too, too much focus on demons keeps your mind away from Jesus and, and, and fear and bondage. 
this hyper focus on demon stuff, it's not good. If you're constantly thinking about demons all the time, where's your mind? It's on demons. You're not thinking about Jesus. It's idolatry to these demons, you know. Uh, Peter Venezuela, he came on my Saturday night call one time and he was talking about how he said, just be strategic with it. Go after them, you know, a certain amount of the day. You know, if you're, if you're really battling them, go after them. But then at the other time, just shut it down. You can't be hyper-focused, hyper-focused. Everything's a demon. There's a demon behind every bush. You're going to pick up spirit, fear demons like that. You're going to be a revolving door for these devils. It's not good. It's more religious demons. And there's not a demon in everything, you know, so if you go to, you know, if you go to Wendy's and they forgot to put your pickles on there, it's not a pickle stealing <laughs> demon. <laughs> okay, it's, it's not. <laughs> so, uh, so you don't have to cast out the pickle stealing demon out of that particular <laughs> Wendy's to get your pickles on there anymore. So, and if you pick up a box of Count Chocula, you're not picking up demons from it. You don't have the Count Chocula demon in your house. Let's, if you're going to Walmart to pick some things up, you're not picking up witchcraft demons because the warlock walked by you. You're not picking up demons because it's a, you know, the whole world has fallen. We can't, you know, go ahead. I just have a question about, like, I hear this a lot, is the Starbucks stuff. Like, people are afraid they're going to pick up spirits. By just yeah. I, that that's controversial. See, I don't, uh, I, I don't think so. See, I don't, I don't think so. That that's my opinion. I mean, right. I I don't, I don't think. I I don't. Hey, how about that? You could be right. <laughs> hey, run that one right up the ladder. All right. Ministry. I say, if you go up the ladder high enough, Satan runs everything. Right. So. Right. Right. No where you're going to drink your coffee. Somewhere up there, he's running the show. Hey, normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't divulge any of my like stuff behind, you know, out here. But we do have Starbucks cups in our house. Yeah. We're not picking demons up by them, so I, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, <laughs> I don't, I don't even drink coffee, but I don't, I don't think that if I drank some, you know, Starbucks or something. But you're wearing Nike, and someone might say that. Right? right. Yeah. The religious yeah. demons are going to go nuts with that too. Yeah, so. Yeah. Maybe I got, anybody got any duct tape I could throw over the Nike envelope? <laughs> oh man, here we go. He's got the religious demons in him. I had that conversation the other day, a testimony about the religious. Now I used to, I'm an ex-witness, right? So you and I had that conversation the other day about Christmas. I benefited a lot from that. I appreciate you taking it. Oh, that. praise God, yeah. But I will be honest, first thing I saw when I looked at Nike, I was like, okay, I probably need to tone it down. Because yeah. I come from a deep legalistic background. And like you said, generations deep, years and years drilled into me. So yeah. I think Starbucks, I'm like, Satan. Yeah. Forget it. I mean, to me, and I could be wrong, I could be wrong, right? Why would I even want to promote it? Why would I? You're right. There was a witch, uh, Satanist Navy Lane, that said all of the corporations are run by Satanists. Everybody at the top knows it. So it all goes up to the top. But really, I don't want something like that in my house. But like we were talking about today in the scriptures, who am I to say, with, no, I'm not somebody else's conscience. Yeah. Right? If it doesn't affect you, it doesn't bother you, you're not getting anything from it, so have at it. Yeah. You know, that it comes out of like personal choice. Really. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the the thing about it, too, is a lot of times there the religious demons, I mean, I, I don't want to get too deep into it, but there's a guy named Pastor G. Craig Lewis. I mean, he's really operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and got a great church in, down in Texas. And when people come up to him, and he says it's mostly the Hebrew Israelites are like, man, you're celebrating that Christmas stuff and you're this and you're, you're, you know. And then he's like, I just looked on your Facebook page. You're smoking blunts. You're doing this. You're doing that. But you're making fun of me for celebrating Christmas. So a lot of times there is. I'm not saying that's always the case. And like I said, you might be right, just like as Brother Mike would say. So, but as of mine, I think I got scriptures and I mean, I have, I got born again on Christmas Eve. That, that 2014, it was like the best day of my life, best Christmas ever. I woke up that morning with my children. I was a, I was a new man, you know, I was a new man. So when Christmas comes around, I, I just, I, I can't see anything other. I mean, 
the Lord was there. The Lord was there at that at that place. You know, I mean, you could say, well, yeah, He can, He could save you anywhere. I mean, I. I I know people that got saved out of a Jehovah's Witness Bible. They just had that was the only Bible they had, and they they got the scriptures they needed. They got saved. So I'm not saying that, but I just I'm telling you guys, God was there that night, and I got choked up when I was listening to Silent Night, and and the Lord was the Lord was there. And as long as you're giving glory to the Lord, I think man, it's it's a great opportunity to at least share Christ with your family members, right? It really, it really is. So, and like I said, I'm not trying to tell you guys one way or the other. I don't want to get into this conversation, but I'm telling you, there's scriptures on both sides and you can give them the Brother Mike line, you might be right, and that, that will keep you guys. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, another rabbit hole here. Oh no, please don't, not, not, not Easter, I'm cutting it loose. <laughs> I, I've struggled with this, and I have a few family members that have struggled with this, but uh, supernatural healing compared to going to the doctor. Like a lot of times I'm waiting for my healing, I'm not going to the doctor, and then I, you see what I'm saying, then I end up yeah. going to the doctor, and, and do you follow where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah and uh, to be honest with you, that's so controversial that I, I mean, Yeah. Because here's the thing as deliverance ministers, you never want to tell somebody to what to do with their, their health. as far as like medications are concerned, with far, as far as, hey, you don't know if they have the faith for that heel to be, you know, the hip to be healed. You don't know what, what's going on. You don't, some of that stuff you, you pray for. The way I look at it is, hey, you, you pray with childlike faith, right, first. If they don't get it, then hey, then that's between them and the Lord to either seek further, whatever, other than you tell them to go to the, you know, whatever they want to do. That's that's between you and I. I I'm, I'm in the healing business. I've seen God heal. He just, you know, he healed me of something last night. You know, it's something that I've been struggling with for a while. Uh, so he will heal physical ailments, but you have to have uh, the faith for it. And we don't know if there's blocks, you got to dig deeper into the blocks, right? So if you've gotten to a point where you've got the family tree down, you've got all the blocks uh, taken care of, and there's still not a healing, now I wouldn't say, hey, you just got to keep praying. You, at that point, put that, you know, hey, that's between you and the Lord. Maybe you might need to go uh, to the doctor at that point. And, yeah. I was told in California that I was going to die from this disease. It's uncurable. There's no medicine for it. And I told two very young doctors, I said, well, Jesus is going to heal me. I'm not going to die. I said, I haven't finished what I've got to do. And they, they both looked at each other. And they said, well, we're, we just want to give you the news. That's all. Yeah. And I said, that's very good of you. I'll see you next year. <laughs> and I did. I saw him next year. And Praise said, God. You didn't believe the and then, then another one, I went again. They said, your God must have answered your prayer. Yeah. And then another time, you didn't come back. I thought you were dead. Yeah. I said, no, I'm alive, so I don't go there. Anymore. Yeah, they'll word curse you. I mean, even with I, yeah. do. even with yeah. sicknesses, watch out for that. You got to shut that down. If somebody comes in and says, "Hey, we're all we're all sick in our house. You were around us yesterday. You're gonna get sick too. You got to shut that down." Do that. Those are word curses. <laughs> Shut it down. You got me sick. Yeah, no, you don't want to give these. Don't give this place to the devil at all like that. Hey, no, no, no. Just those word curses are real. You had the faith that you were you were going to be healed, so you you had that faith, right? So, uh, but sometimes there is something that they're missing that needs to be checked out by a doctor. We don't want to be, uh, you know, I, I'm the first one to tell them, hey, I'm not a doctor. I know nothing they don't about get that. Checked out, and they don't know that you're sick. And there's not a miracle going to happen. So you've got to step out yeah. and show it can. Happen. Right. I had a brother, that's, glad you brought that up. I had a brother in Christ that I couldn't get nothing to budge out of him. He had this shooting pain and he was killed over. He said it was the worst pain of his life. Well, he had a gallbladder, gallbladder stones. And then uh, oh, it, well, nothing would leave, but I didn't know it was gallbladder, right? So he goes in. I said, go to the go to the emergency room, get the diagnosis. I'm casting demons out of him in the emergency room. Mm -hmm. He gets healed in the emergency room because we went after the gallbladder stuff. Yeah. So he didn't have to come back. He didn't have to take no medication. He was healed, but we had to get that diagnosis. Then he had the 
the sheet of saying, hey, you know, I had this, I got diagnosed with this, now I'm healed. So God will do that too sometimes. It's where he wants to get the glory like, hey, this is what you did. This is, this is what you had. This is what the doctors diagnosed you with. Now you don't have it anymore. So those di doctor diagnoses are good. So, yeah, I mean, it is. It's a controversial thing with that. You got to, the, the faith plays in a, a, a very big part into the faith healing stuff, right? So, um, and a lot of times they're rooted in something, some kind of a deep sin that you got to root out and get them to repent of and all that stuff. Uh, and it's fun when you're in uh, a room like that with everybody sick and they all are sick while you're waiting two hours. You go around and ask people, why are you here? And you pray for them all. And they go, well, why are you here? You're okay. So you just pray for them. And oh, that's great. Nice. Give them a Christian track. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Nice. There we go. All right. Uh, wrapping it up, as Rick would say. Uh, Deliverance is not a quick fix. A lot of the people that come out of rehab centers and stuff like that, they, they are trading this deliverance in. Their drugs are gone now, but the demon of uh, the demon of addiction never left them. So now they just trade this over for uh, this. So they come, they become what's known as deliverance junkies. Okay, a lot of times they'll trade over meth addictions for like uh, Mountain Dew addictions, right? There was a guy that had a meth addiction, stopped the meth, but he drank 24 cans of Mountain Dew a day. Oh, my God. So that demon is almost worse at that point, right? They never got the demon out. But this becomes a substitute for these people and then they become what's known as deliverance junkies. And it's, they, they got a touch from the Lord at one point, something left them, and they, they, it's just like that same high that they got when they first took the drug, right? They first took that drug, they got that high, that's why they're slaves to that drug. They want to go back to that first high, they never get there. So these deliverance junkies will come, well, I got, I got free that one day, I don't, I'm no longer doing this, this and that, so hey, you got to get me free here. And then they're, they're not, sometimes they're plants. They don't, they don't take their thoughts captive. They're not, they're not doing the things they need to do. Go ahead. So what does the deliverance junkie do? And what do you do as a minister to the deliverance junkie? You've got to make sure they're doing what you tell them. And uh, you can't become a slave to them, right? So they'll end up texting you every day, that kind of stuff. You gotta, you gotta set boundaries. Hey, I told you, you know, two weeks from now, Hey, if you want to text me, I'll pray for you or whatever. But uh, they think that this is like a you're you're their uh, one-stop shop type of person. You gotta you gotta shut that down. Just tell them, hey, here's the scriptures I gave you. Here's the uh, method for the renewal of the mind. You gotta take your fear thoughts captive. Uh, that's why you're loaded up, right? But you cannot you can't play the game there. You're almost being codependent with this person. They have to learn how to fight on their own. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So watch out for the. Uh, deliverance junkie stuff and then the uh, planting seeds just never underestimate the what planting seeds can do and if you're just willing to talk about Christ in any way shape or form with somebody you are planting seeds whether whether you know it or not right so if you are planting seeds good things will happen, but everybody wants to be that next great evangelist where everybody they talk to gets one to Christ. But guess what? A lot of times, the harder work is the scraping of the soil to get the seeds planted in. That's what nobody wants to do. Those hard-nosed people that are in the gangs that you go up to and talk on the side of the street, you know, like when Dave Wilkerson won that, uh, Nikki Cruz, right? He got punched in the face for that. He got, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a good encounter, but look what he did with Nikki Cruz. He planted that seed. He was will, he's willing to do that. The other ones that are just there to go, you know, pull the harvest out, that person's been prayed for their whole lives. Grandma's been on their knees for them for the last 30 years. Now they're ripe, they get one to the Lord. Okay, but how many people had to do that hard tillage, right? Of planting those seeds and not seeing any harvest and seeing that person getting worse before they they cry out and come to the Lord that that part of it's hard and do not take any of this uh, 
part of planting seeds. If you think you're not an evangelist, but you're still talking about Jesus to people, you are doing hard work. Amen. You are doing it, right? The Lord ultimately gets all the, the, uh, the credit for the increase. But there's many different people, many different hands in play here when it comes to evangelism. So make sure that you guys know that and do not get discouraged because what's, what the enemy is going to do is he's going to tell you, oh, you don't have that evangelism gift. You can't talk to them. It's not going to work. You. you know, nobody's, you're not bringing forth any, any, and really you are doing all of what you need to do. Um, even in Phoenix area, going around just giving people waters is, is a good ministry, right? right? Giving people a book of John, giving them a tract. Just like she said, giving them a tract, uh, having a bag of food just sitting around, right? Maybe a bag of chips you can give somebody. You can you can speak some life into them. Something I know a lady that got saved. She was on the on the streets, homeless, just praying that God would kill her. And somebody came up to her, a preacher, a street preacher, and was speaking uh, scriptures on her. And she said every time he spoke a scripture. She said more and more breath came into her lungs, just from the scriptures. And then she came up, and then she's like, she got filled with the Holy Spirit just from this, this preacher doing that. She wanted to die. She was a junkie. Now she's, uh, yeah, she's, it's, uh, that was an amazing thing. So we, we never know when the Lord is going to move. We just got to keep planting <laughs> seeds and be patient with the harvest. That's the most thing is be patient with the harvest because we never know uh, when it's going to take place. You might not see people that you plant seeds with until you get into glory. And you've got to be okay with that. You've got to be okay with that, right? So um, that's, all, that's all I kind of had today. Has anybody got any questions? Do you have any cases or does anyone, any stories where you're in a neighborhood and the children want to come up to you and know about Jesus, how do you, you, do, you don't want them to get beat up by their parents, you don't want them to be killed by their parents. I mean, I have no idea. I know when adults decide to, they don't want witchcraft, they go after them. So I, I'm trying to walk softly to this, where the children want Jesus, and I'm, I'm trying to pray correctly. Um, yeah, you could take you could take him. Uh, the guy by name David Daniels, uh, he took over for Chick, Jack Trick, the Chick Tracks. They've got, I mean, there's so many people that have gotten saved through Chick Tracks. It's the unbelievable. Won't let me give them a track. Okay, well, yeah, but I'm just saying in general, uh, he got saved. He was an eight year old boy, and he got saved uh, through somebody gave him a Chick Track. It was. Uh, it was, this was your life, checked, and then he just read it with them, right? Because they're just like little comic books. Read it with them, and then at the end, he gave his life to the Lord. So if there's an opening for that, you can just read a tract with them and then tell them, well, Jesus, give them the gospel. Well, their parents won't let them cross the street anymore, too. Yeah, well, then, yeah, then you got to so you gotta pray for an opening. With school is I'm going way, way towards the school and leaving tracts around there. So they could read the track and not, and not take it home. Yeah. But I don't know if there's any cases where I I sometimes think that the child is saved because uh, the witchcraft that's coming at me, the witches leave their signs. Well, I've been getting signs the opposite across, uh -huh. and so a witch wouldn't leave me across. So I'm thinking that the child's being taught how to be a witch, and they leave me a little message, and so. Um, that's po of, that's possible, but I, I wouldn't worry about it. Say, well, you know, the devil's a liar. Well, I haven't really touched the child or gave him any yeah. scriptures verbally, but I s walk in the yard and say it out loud or or sing it out loud. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. You just got to take what what God will give you, ask for an opportunity to share, right? Uh, that's it. That's And then the Lord will open that up because that has to be, when you get to the point of evangelizing for somebody, there's so much stuff happening in the spirit realm before that takes place when they give their life to the Lord, you couldn't even imagine it, right? I had so many people praying for me before I got saved. It was unbelievable. 
Uh, I, I had a buddy of mine that I hadn't talked to for 20 years that was weeping in prayer for me when I was going through the worst of what I was going through. But then he was able to walk, run into me at church one day and he's like, wow, so the Lord will show you sometimes what your fruit was, what, what seeds you did, who you prayed for. He'll show you that. He wants to do that. God wants to show you good fruit. But you have to be patient with the harvest. You have to be patient to see. It takes a long time to grow a disciple. You have to be able to be okay with that. You have to be able to walk with them when they do their, you know, just like a little baby kid, right? You, what, they don't learn to just run right away. They, they walk for a little ways and then they fall down. You got to be able to pick them up, right? And it takes a whole, it, it really does. It takes a whole group of people, right? Uh, to, to help raise up one disciple, just like, a, you know, it takes a village, right? So uh, that's where the crowd of great witnesses will, will come and play there. And you got to, you got to, you got to be able to have that patience. So, hey, Brent, would you be willing to go grab some buckets? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Uh, go ahead. Oh, it's just a praise report. You're talking about this planting seeds. Go back two years, a Muslim family that I've been ministering to for two years. The woman took Jesus on. Oh, um, nice. And two years ago, but said it was impossible. I mean, the husband didn't want to hear it. He didn't want, he didn't want to pet. He didn't want to do any of that thing. Fine. We just loved on them, talked to them a lot. They're in Europe. And um, I just got pictures from them yesterday. Oh, praise God. The whole family got baptized. Wow. Oh, praise God. That's Muslim, great. whole Muslim praise family. God. That's great. Praise God. That's fruit. So you see that? Two years, though. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a, like you said, it wasn't a desperate, like, we got to make a, just loving. Yeah. Just, lo just, just loving. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that lady that I brought up earlier, too, that was going to leave her husband for the, because uh, she thought he was in a cult. <laughs> We had a, we were praying for her intercessory prayer every every week to get her to that point, right? So you have to pray for people. You have to you have to preach the gospel. You have to pray for people, and you have to be patient. That's what God will God. Uh, some people it's quicker, and some people it's not as quick. But we have to be patient through the process. So um, anybody else got any questions? I just have a question. I yeah. Um, you start doing deliverance with someone, and while you're going through the process, you realize that the person probably has not made a genuine decision to follow Christ. You ask the person, <clears throat> "Tell me about when you got saved." When you, you know, any, and there's, it's very vague. It's very general. Yeah. It's just kind of like recited, and it's been said many times, but there's not a true relationship. Yeah. Okay, so you've got, you've done deliverance. You've seen the that happen. But then you feel like, okay, I can't go anymore. What do you, personally, the responsibility? Now the person's been cleaned out in areas, but they're not saved. What do you do? Repent, cover them, pray for them, be there for them, or just release them? I would go to try to get them filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what I do uh, first. Is I try. They're not saved. I try, yeah, I try to go there as far as... Uh, you, you want to ask them, yeah, you want to ask them if they're saved first. Go there and then get them filled with the Holy Ghost. Derek Prince would go, he had so much favor, he would go into Catholic places and, and do deliverance on them, right? So these people, half of them didn't know Jesus from anything, you know. But he would get them, he would, they would go through deliverance. Uh, it says, when, if I cast out devils by the finger of God, the, the kingdom of God has come unto you. So that lady that that lady that I was talking about earlier too, she, I believe, got born again from that one demon coming out of her. The, the kingdom of God came into her. She was a she was a Catholic. She she was a Catholic. So sometimes the power of God will move on somebody at such a at such a high level at that point that they could get a miracle there. But you still do want to you want to focus on that relationship. She brought up that that big piece there. If the people don't have a good relationship with Christ, they're usually not good candidates for, for deliverance, right? It's not, it's not a good fit. If they don't want to work on the relationship. Uh, go ahead. It's kind, of, it's kind of to her point, one of the videos you sent to me, uh, 
like Mr. Derek Price, he said, deliverance is for the desperate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you gotta want it. Like, to right. go through what well, we gotta go through and keep coming back again and again. It's not a, uh, maybe I can take it or leave kind of thing. It's, no, man, my life is a wreck. I need this. Right. Yep, and the way Brother Mike teaches it, and I think this is true, you need to at least go after Jesus at the same rate you went after the world yeah. right. to get to get anything, any kind of demons out of you. So if you were a hardcore sinner Satanist person and you were you were all in making altars in your you know house. You gotta at least want to go that way. I would step it up at least ten notches to get those demons out. Otherwise, you know that was the problem with one of those plants that I was telling you. He was, I think he just wanted to get free. I don't think he wanted to do ministry. That's a bad spot to be in, where you don't want to do anything for God. You just want that freedom. He knows what you. He knows that. Yeah. He knows when you just want to get free, because a lot of times you just want to get free so you can go back in your wrecked life. You're going to pick something else up worse. But if you want to get free so you can help make disciples and get into the, get into the war, he'll do it. He'll hit you. And, and, and you'll, you'll be a changed person. Amen. So anybody else got any questions before we pray? If anybody, yeah, if anybody wants any prayer, um, you guys can come up to the front here. Let the ministry stream will come up and help pray. And, Is there any buckets back there? Oh, I didn't see them They're right in front of my face. Yeah, just come come on up to the front if anybody wants any prayer for anything. If there's anything that anything that you're having a hard time, if anything stirred up in you today from any of the 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 teaching, any any type of religious demons got stirred up today. This is a good time to, to get them out, right? You just got to repent and know that something is stirring in you that needs to come out, right? So, so Father God, we just, we're just so sorry, Lord. We're so sorry we've let these, we've let these demons just run our lives, Lord. We've, we haven't taken our thoughts captive. I thought it was you telling me all these things, Lord, and it, it turns out it was the enemy. It was the enemy just to come in and, and keep me isolated, keep me away from everybody else, Lord. I'm so sorry that I listened to these devils. I didn't renew my mind, Lord. That's your, that's your will, it says in there. It says in the Bible, that's your will that I renew my mind, Lord, and I haven't been doing this. I haven't been taking my thoughts captive. I haven't been doing this, Lord. I've been tricked. I've been <laughs> deceived, Lord. I've been deceived. I'm so sorry, Lord. Help me. Have mercy on me, Lord. I'm so sorry. Have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy on me. I gotta take these fear thoughts captive. God, has, you have never given me a spirit of fear. Just you give me a, a power, love, and a sound mind. That's what you gave me, Lord. I'm sorry that I got these these fear demons in me, and I haven't taken care of them yet. Lord, I'm gonna walk in your righteousness. I'm gonna walk in your boldness, Lord. Help me to walk in your boldness, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me to walk in your boldness and, and to win souls, Lord. Help me to plant these seeds, Lord. I'm so sorry that I haven't been planting seeds, Lord. I'm so sorry, Lord. I haven't been doing this. The demons tricked me into thinking that you weren't doing anything. That, that you weren't moving and I didn't have that evangelist gift, Lord. I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry, Lord. All these ministry blocking spirits, Lord, I've let them block my ministry. I haven't done anything for you, Lord. I'm so sorry. Have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy on me right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I bind the strong man of fear over everybody in this place right now in Jesus' name. 
Come out of that body, all that fear. Come out of that body right now in Jesus' name. Come all the way out of that body, all that fear. Come all the way out right now in Jesus' name. Come all the way out of that body, all those fear demons. Go right now. All that fear. Come all the way out of that body right now in Jesus' name. Come all the way out. Fear. Go right now. Fear. Come out of the body right now in Jesus' name. Come out. Fear. Go right now in Jesus' name. Fear. Go right now. Come out of the body right now. Come out. Every fear demon. Every religious demon. Come out right now. Every religious demon. Come out right now. Every religious demon. Come out of that body right now in Jesus' name. New age devils. Go right now. New age devils. Come out of that body right now. New age devils. Go right now. New age devils. Go right now. New age devils. Come out of the body right now in Jesus' name. New age devils. Come all the way out right now. Every religious demon. Go right now. Every religious demon. Come all the way out right now. Every religious demon. Come all the way out of the body right now in Jesus' name. Every religious demon. Go right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come all the way out right now. Come all the way out. All that deception. Come all the way out right now. All that deception. Go right now. All that deception. Go right now in Jesus' name. All that deception. Come out of that body right now. All that deception. Come out of that body right now in Jesus' name. All that deception, come out of that body right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of there. Religious demons, go right now. Religious demons, go right now. Religious demons, come out of the body right now in Jesus' name. Religious demons, go right now. Religious demons, come out of that body right now in Jesus' name. Religious demons, go right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come out of that body. Religious demons, come all the way out right now. Religious demons, come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out of the body right now. Come all the way out of there right now in Jesus' name. Come out of the body right now. Come out of the body right now. Religious devils, go. Come out, religious devils, go right now in Jesus' name. Come out of his body right now. Religious devils, go right now in Jesus' name. Come out of him right now. Come out of him. Every religious devil, go right now. Every religious devil, go right now in Jesus' name. Every religious devil, come out of the body right now. Every religious devil, come out of the body right now in Jesus' name. Go right now in Jesus' name. Come out of the body right now. Come out of the body right now. Religious devils, go. Religious devils, go right now. Come out of that body. Jehovah's Witness, go right now. Jehovah's Witness devils, come out right now. Come out of that body right now. Charles Taze Russell, go. Charles Taze Russell, come out of that body right now in Jesus' name. Charles Taze Russell, come out of the body right now. Come out of the body right now. Come out quicker. Come out of that body quicker. Let's go. Come out of that body right now. Come out of that body right now in Jesus' name. All you new age devils, come all the way out right now. All you new age devils, come out of that body right now. Come all the way out of that body right now. Every religious demon, come all the way out right now. Every